Hey. How's everyone? How's everyone? Thank you for being here. Three at three just started. Today we have maps. Here's my uh hat for Halloween. We're starting Halloween today, actually, here in three at three. Next week we're gonna have Halloween databases and the next week too. So two day two weeks of Halloween. We have Michael, Aaron, and Elaine is gonna be here for first time. You know, Elaine is a great good friend of us here in Data Meaning. Uh, and he's gonna be us with us today and discussing business related to maps. Uh, honestly, business related to map can be super misleading. Uh, you know, so you need to be careful. And that's what we wanted to do the show today because data visualizations related to map can be super misleading. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't do it a right job to understand, to explain how this business are and what do you need, to, what you're trying to story to be, it can be super misleading. So, for example, me, I'm gonna bring the horrible ones uh, and today to show you that you can mislead so many people. And this is from magazines like US Today. So if you think about it, <clears throat> data visualizations related to maps, you need to be very careful with them. So today we're gonna have three visualizations. Every one of us is gonna have a visualization here. We're gonna discuss it. You can, in the chat can discuss it with us too. We're gonna have three questions, especially the first question will be around like, what do we like if we understand what's happening in this visualization? The second one is, more about what we don't understand or we understand, you know, what is, if there is anything that is confusing, which here there's going to be a lot of things that are confusing. And then how can we make it better? So here on the screen, the first visualizations are from me. Uh, the one from here from the left, it's uh, Colorado marijuana smuggling. I think, you know, that will be, uh, hopefully that grab your attention. And I don't know you, but I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of thing, crazy stuff here already. And then on the right, it's uh, COVID numbers from Ohio. And I wanted to ask Aaron, because he's laughing already. Aaron, <laughs> what are you looking at it here in the one on the Colorado marijuana? What do, you, what do you think? And in the chat, everyone, in the chat, you can participate too. Let us know what you think. What do you think? What's your first impression? Uh, well, my, my first question is, is uh, so on the one on the left, uh, the, Caro the Colorado marijuana smuggling, if, if it's such a problem across the United States, why are the two states directly below Colorado have none? <laughs> it, it's, yeah. it's right next to it. Do we have, you have seats mm -hmm. right next to Colorado. How, how, did, how, did, how do they not have any? Uh, exactly. Also, you have no idea how much is going to each one. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a yes or no, true or false. Like, is there or isn't there with no context behind it? Elaine, what do you think? Elaine, what, what, what was your first impression when you saw, what, what is this? That, that's actually a good point that Aaron brought up. Maybe they have really tight, like, state border patrol, or they might have their own, like, marijuana smuggling problem that's, that there would, would be a separate chart for, what is the state below Colorado? Is that <laughs> Utah? Like, Utah marijuana smuggling. I'm not sure if it's Utah. Don't, don't <laughs> know. They have very good guns there, they told me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, all all the states that have this issue are highlighted blue, and it's a lot of blue to cover on the map. So mm -hmm. it, it would be nice to know like what the severity is within each state. So maybe different mm -hmm. shadings of blue, um, or or maybe even a different color to highlight if, how severe it is. Like if there's a very small problem, it's like an intermediate problem, or it's like a very big problem that there's so much Colorado marijuana being smuggled into those states. I mean, that, um, the color should be green, should it not? Yeah, that's that's a good point, too. They should be green. Uh, I, I, also, I thought it was funny, uh, at the very bottom there, it says, uh, just has the USA Today logo with yes. the blue circle. It's the same yes. color as the yes. map. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I was going to say that. I was waiting for somebody to say that. That is true. That is true. There's some kind of connection between Car Colorado marijuana and USA Today. <laughs> what about the uh, the arrows that were they were pointing? Is is there a point to that, or is that just this? Are, are those specific states we're supposed to be highlighting? Yeah, it, yeah. There is no, there is nothing that tells us what is this lines are going. Like, what is the reason for the lines? Right? There is no really. It doesn't explain exactly what's going on. And this is from uh, sources from El Paso Intelligence Center. And 
it, this is this was posted on the US today. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah? And and then for me it was like, what does it have to do this blue USA Today circle with the blue here? I'm telling you, Joe, Joe is uh we're on the same mindset. He's there's some kind of connection with the smuggling in USA today. Exactly. Then on here on the right, what we have is like all the numbers for Ohio. So at least, you know, we have Ohio and then it, I, I don't know if every single of these dots mean, I don't know, uh, the test given or something. It's, I mean, it's I think there, it's yeah. there in the bottom right. One dot equals a thousand Ohioans. Ohioans. Okay. Okay. It's a population. All right. Yeah. I, I thought that this one was no horrendous, but what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you see, Michael, about this one on the right? Or if you have anything about the marijuana one. Uh, no, I think everybody touched on, you know, what was potentially problematic with the one on the, the left with the marijuana. Uh, the Ohio COVID numbers, um, yeah, I'm still still trying to figure out what I'm looking at. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of these, The going to the Ohio um, visualization, I see a lot of these in newspapers or some articles um, where th this type of data is trying to be conveyed within the mm -hmm. story. Um, mm -hmm. I think it might be more of a visual aid rather than trying to, to really assist in explaining the data. Because I, I can say that if you look at the state of Ohio and then you see the green bar there and then the blue section and then the small mm -hmm. tiny red one there, it, it does show you like the comparison between all the tests that have been given out and all the positive tests in relation to the rest mm -hmm. of the entire population. So it shows the scale and the magnitude of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, I don't know if it is beneficial in any other way. We talk about that often yeah. of like, what's what's the story being told? And mm -hmm. I, I think that's the point of land is like, it, there's a couple of numbers there, sure. And there's a couple of, of uh, colors there, sure. But the idea is that the, I think what you're just trying to say is that they're uh, of the number of people in, in Ohio, mm -hmm. the, the the number of people who uh, have died or have had a positive test or even, even just tests given are very small in, in comparison to the, the population of the state. Yeah, mm -hmm. but in that sense, well, what I do like about this, though, it is the fact that they kind of humanized the state. Um, so each one represents a thousand people. So it, it does show the impact there. But, you know, I think being a data person, you look at that and I'm trying to figure out, well, what is the total population? How many dots are there? You know, times a thousand. OK, I've got the total population. What does that percentage look like? Um, so it, for me, it's detracting from the actual story. You know, I, I think it's on the right track, but the magnitude and the impact um, I'm lost on. So I, I do see it's the test given is still, it's a small uh, percentage, mm -hmm. um, but to what percentage overall? Um, you know, I can only gauge it by the number of dots and sizes, which is a guesstimate. I think I'd like to see this also maybe at the county level, because I know like I do some COVID dashboards just on my own, just to see how right. like our county is doing and then how the, how the central Florida counties are doing, because it's not, as we've seen, it, it is county by county of how, how good or bad uh, the, the situation is. So uh, and I don't know where this came from or if it even is possible, but it'd be nice to be able to select your county and then see how the breakdown for your county is on top of that now. Correct. Correct. So, so the county. So, so you don't think that having that um, kind of like map shape, honestly, is helping in any way to to tell the story, right? It really doesn't do that much. Honestly. I think to, to get to an answer, no. But I think to uh, personalize it to the person. If this was a newspaper article that mm -hmm. was in Ohio, like people would immediately have a yeah. connection to right. it. Uh, us in other states, we don't. But uh, so I, I, I think it was a, a good play on trying to make that connection while at the same time not necessarily providing a ton of context. Uh, but, you know, the story they're telling here is is uh, clear, I think. 
I think too, if you if you ever was from Ohio and look at this, right, you see all that green bar, you're like, wow, we're we're very behind on on giving tests, right? Like I will be like a little worried if I look at this and like, what's going on in my state? Um, this is just not not much, right? So yeah, to Michael's good. point, it'd be good if we yeah. saw some kind of percentages here of like what what of the million tests, how many are in, in the state? What percentage is that? Same thing for the positive tests and the deaths. Yeah. yeah. And then Sydney um, <laughs> also commented in our chat section. He says the Ohio COVID number is cool, but it doesn't tell me much about how uh, Ohio is compared to the rest of the U.S. So, right. yeah, for, for the purposes of this viz, it, it, like we said, it might be just in a local Ohio newspaper mm -hmm. or article. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, comparing it to the rest of the U.S., you'll definitely see that it. it I imagine it might be lower compared to, let's say, California or Texas or New York or like the, the bigger culprits that we've seen throughout the, the pandemic. Right. Yeah. And I, I, like Aaron said, you know, comparing it to the county could be better because if I'm, I'm I may be from Ohio, but I'm a specific county. That's what I will care about. Right. How is my county is doing compared to the other counties or things like that? Mm -hmm. So that makes more sense. I think that's usually what you find is in some of these states where you've got a, a huge majority of the population in one county, mm -hmm. the test given could be isolated right there. We don't know. Um, and I, I think, okay, they did what they said. Here's the Ohio COVID numbers, but there's no story. Mm -hmm. you know, I think you do need, you're missing that data. The county level would be great. You know, where are we deficient? Uh, where is it? you know doing a good job where did those deaths kind of come from um positive tests are there correlations uh th there's too many ancillary questions that i think this is driving and might miss the mark okay okay so how you can make it better aaron like one of these two charts or, or at least the colorado one how what, what do you think yeah. it will need to at least the, the the one on the left, obviously you get you got to turn that green. Uh, you got to <laughs> change the shading uh, of that green based on um, mm -hmm. on the the intensity of whatever metric they're showing here. Because as far as I can tell, it's just yes or no. Uh, so we need some kind of like metric to be able to to weight that that color. Um, that that probably be it, and probably get rid of those arrows. We, the arrows we, don't make no sense, right? Yeah, we get to the point that it's, it's Colorado marijuana smuggling, so sh sure, uh, color Colorado differently. That's fine, uh, but you don't need those arrows because we get the context of the map. It almost yeah. reminds me of if you, if you all remember when you go um, flying in an airplane, they have those in-flight magazines. And then the, for the airline, they have this one page that says, here are all the destinations we fly to. And then they have a map of like the US or the Caribbean or like the world. And it kind of reminds me of something like that. But not all arrows might point to all destinations. It's like we might fly somewhere into the Central America region. I'm not sure <laughs> which ports, but we fly there. So I think that Joe has something very interesting. It, Joe, you're pretty much saying they're smuggling the data. That's what they're doing, right? <laughs> smuggling the data too. So he said that this is a great base to hide the data and stories. We know location data of this stuff down to at least the county, but it needs more charts to be able to truly compare. Correct. You're right. Yeah. So I, I will here. say, I will say on in, in defense of the whoever put this together, I, I have found it very difficult to get accurate uh COVID numbers because you have to go to so many different places to gather it. There's probably mm -hmm. one spot that has all of the numbers. So it's easy to put something like that together, but to go to each county and to get mm -hmm. all that data and compile it all together is is very difficult to do. Still, you know, this this far into it. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, okay. Does so anybody have anything else, or we just move to the next one? I just wanted to go really quick with this one, just to show. Honestly, my my goal was to show like you know how data visualization related to maps can be very misleading, and you can be you need to be very careful. Uh, so. The, the thing we want to do with this show is that our solicitations related to maps, you know, you have to make sure that it tells the story, don't get people confused, and, and they can be very misleading. So you need to be very careful with that. I personally try not to use them most of the time, and that's what, what I do, but um, but I know that people like them, uh, but if you need to be careful. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Emil, that's a good point. Um, Chris Tauber from last week mentioned mm -hmm. this about like, you know, he brought a map in and like this map would be so much easier to understand if it was just a simple bar chart or line graph or whatever it was. Uh, so that, that's a good point is that you, just because a map looks fancy and it looks like advanced, it's, it's, it's not if you're not displaying the right information. Yeah, it's yep. not adding really real value yet. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, who, who, um, Ellen, you have one you said, right? You want to share? I do have one. I can share it on my screen if you all give me let's, one second. Let's, let's um, Elaine share and he will... As my first debut on the three of three show. Yeah. Very exciting. Let's, let's, let's Elaine. Uh, oh, oh, oh. That's Here nice. we go. Elaine, man. All right. This should be it. So I just picked this out not too long ago. Um, and it's very interesting because... If, if I can give my perspective first. Yes, of course. There's a lot going on on this one visualization. We have a lot of text. We have a lot of icons. We have the map of the US here, all these different colors. I'm a big fan of icons and um, uh, having different colors or shades of colors to help tell a story through data visualizations. But with this, there's I think there's just way too much going on. And there might be a few. Um, hidden parts of this viz, if you can spot them where there's just like this big error, I don't know if it's on purpose or if they just did it to condense everything into this one small area. Okay. But like the state it, size? Yeah, like the state size, exactly. And the fact that California is like scooched way too far inside to the, to um, what do you call it? The four corner states that are no longer four corners anymore. Look, look how close Florida is to Louisiana. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, I, I see down there at the bottom of the map, although there's lots of stuff going on, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on them, just the map. It says the state size is distorted for whatever the reason there. I don't know if I even understand what they did. According to each state's CSTA computer science standard school adoption rate hmm. for K-8. Oh, interesting. Uh, it gives a reason, but I don't know if it really like serves anything. I mean, if each, each area have their its own title, which kind of like tell the story, right? That what, what can we do better? Mm -hmm. uh, it's time to invest in education. I mean, you can see that it's trying to at least uh, help you follow some directions to understand what is in each chart. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like that. Um, what else? What, else do we, what, what, what do you see here, Michael? That you like <laughs> the big I, I like, well, <laughs> No, I, I do like aside from the map, which I think is the distractor here. Um, I, I do like that things are organized in containers that I can go through. They've got some titles, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I, I think the map is the distractor. If you pulled the map out, you know, it looks like a nice infographic with you know, some informative information. The fact that the map is distorted and now I've got to wrap my head around, well, what is this whole thing and how does that even work? Now it's, it's taken away from, I think, the messaging. Um, yeah, imagine you were in a business meeting, probably most of that time will be spent on trying to explain what the visualization is rather than what the mm -hmm. story of the data is. Correct, correct. And then you have the top states and bottom states, Aaron, but what happened with the other color? Yeah, I think the color on the map is not based on the top and bottom states. If you look underneath okay. that mm -hmm. explanation for the distorted shapes, it, I think that's the color for the map. Okay, the standard rate. But I, was, yeah. I did the same thing. I was looking at top and bottom states and like a variation of the purples in the middle, like, the, but I guess that goes just for that section. Probably, yeah, that's what it looks like. So yeah, with having two different sections with different color legends. And they're too close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can, you can get easily confused. Exactly. Um, then yeah. also here looking at this bar, this char, um, mm -hmm. this bar where it has 93% of parents of K-12 students believe STEM education should be a priority. Does this this blue is the same shade as this blue here in the top states and then also throughout the rest of the, the map. So there's, there's a lot going on and uh, all kinds of different definitions that are attached to each 
color or icon or um, uh, data point. Okay. Well, I think at that point, you know, what purpose does that bar serve? Mm -hmm. Right. It's just extra noise in there. It would have been nice just to emphasize the ninety-three percent and just be done with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your dual encoding at that point is like, oh yeah, that's. I still think that this is a an effective infographic. Um, there's definitely some improvements. We've talked about the map being, you know, by far for me, you know, the, the most ineffective. Um, only to do the size. Now the coloring, coloration. The challenge that I have is now my eyes are going down to the legend to read the color to go back up. Um, so I'm constantly scanning which is a problem. OK. One of the things that I noticed here that I like is they made a use of pie charts in not a horrible way or like a way that could work. You know, they only have two colors, gray or red, gray or blue. And you can you can actually understand, right? So it's not a, like really bad. I mean, they only have two, two colors, like in reality, two. So it's not horrendous. I mean, I, th I think uh, in this specific case, uh, they're not bad. I mean, you can use something else, but what do you think, Aaron? They're not super bad. <laughs> so I see I see 11 pie charts, and that's probably 11 too many. <laughs> I, I get your the point of having just two colors, because if you're going to have a pie chart, this should only be two colors. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, like in the bottom right hand corner, all of those they have their percentage next to it. So what what's the point of the pie chart? It has it has no point. You because you're giving you're giving the number and a visual that doesn't help mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The, the yeah. one on the left is is half. Like what's the point of putting that there other than it's just a chart and you needed to fill some space. But you know I'm I'm just trying to focus on the the map portion of this. Uh, I, I know this is kind of like all encompassing here. I, I don't remember who said it, but this just the distortion of the of all the shapes, and and it, no one understands this except for the person that made it, and then that person has to explain it to everybody of of why Missouri in the middle of the, of the country is almost as big as Texas, <laughs> and Nebraska is huge. Like so, we, now you have to. I think Mike said it. Like it's just distracting, and, and like, is it even necessary? Is there a different way they should do this, or? Is this the story? Are they trying? Are they trying to grab your attention to get you into what they're talking about? Because I could see they're they're kind of going through a story. They're they're explaining things as as they go as you go across the page. But it's almost so like distracting to try to understand that that the rest becomes a blur. Elaine, we have somebody from the chat. Michael, what is he saying? Yeah, so Michael Pennington, he said he agrees with us, uh, saying a bit too busy and difficult to see takeaways quickly. Resizing states which already occupy disproportionate amounts of screen real estate make that particular choice rather confounding. Those are very in interesting use of words to describe a viz. I've never heard anyone call a viz confounding before. Yeah. There is definitely improvements that can be done to the map, especially why do you need to, uh, if you go a little bit off, well, all of those states that they're... Um, specifying with those lines where Pennsylvania, now go a little bit down, like a, a little bit, oh, anyway, right. right, right, all of that. Why did, that's a lot of space right there that you are just to identify each state. And I, I don't need, I don't really think that that's adding any value. I think Michael had mentioned in a previous episode of uh, sometimes it's better to use hex maps where mm -hmm. you can get, even though it's not the right shape, you know kind of what it is and where it's at rather than doing those call outs like that. Exactly. Yeah. It seems to be very common, especially in the Northeast of US, all these small states are so close to mm -hmm. each other and they have these call out lines to, to help the reader see which state it is. But yeah, it is taking up a lot of that extra white space where it could have been used in a different way to make sure the, the real estate of the visualization mm -hmm. is more, more balanced. Correct, correct. So when we're talking about the maps, you know, the map in general, I, I don't think does a whole lot, but what it I think does effectively is kind of brings some insight to where your bottom states are more mm -hmm. in kind of the central northern area of the US. 
So again, whether you use like hex maps or something, you can still showcase that. Um, but that was kind of interesting, I think, for me, if we're, we're focusing just on, on the map piece. Uh, th there's a whole lot more dual encoding going around. The other problem that I have is on the adoption rate, your top states, everything's at 100%. So your next five states, those could be 100%. Again, a metric that I, I don't see is very valuable. You could show a kind of that uh, tied ranking and then show the next set of uh, four or five states, you know, underneath that. Because right now, that metric doesn't tell me a whole lot. You can see it on the map, too. Well, you can't because it's, it's a different encoding, and that's the confusion. Correct. Yeah, almost all of those... Those five states up there, almost all of them have different colors on the map. Mm -hmm. So they're not a they're a top state yeah. in that section, but they're not a top state in whatever that metric is the, for the map. All right. I don't know who mentioned it, but the the pie charts, at least for me, um, especially the gray and the blue, they are difficult to see. The you know, the difference between the, the angles, you know, for me, it, it's kind of blurring into just one gray color. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd rather just see at that point, just the number. Again, stop no, the yeah, rule and code, just to have a pretty chart, uh, just show me the number or figure out a better graphic. Maybe maybe the, the numbers and you can rank them and that could give you at least some type of insight, right? So if you rank those numbers instead, of, you see, because they're not ranked like 18, 28, 15, there, there's no rank here of, of any. I don't even think they're the top five because those are the same yeah. top, those are the same five that we have at the top there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then here in the bottom, I just noticed this, they have this, um, I believe it's the call to action or the key takeaway of this visualization, where it mm -hmm. says we have a responsibility to teach and inspire tomorrow's inventors and innovators today. So. Okay. There, there's some some reasoning behind all these the, the numbers and the data say like there's an issue with stem education in the us uh so the call to action it, to me seems a bit nebulous or ambiguous or nebulous that's the right word is we have to teach and inspire our children or, or our students um to become the innovators of tomorrow but what what is really the the core issue here and is this call to action really the solution to what we what we need to do um correct then it's yeah not it's not explaining the the main story oh, correctly mm -hmm. and i think you have to interpret that i think at least from what i can tell is there's a disparity across all the states there's no continuity or consistency with the way any one state does anything mm -hmm. And if we're, we're talking about that messaging, you know, the responsibility to teach and inspire, uh, I'm not saying standardization is always the right way to go, but, you know, the proportions on scoring and top and bottom states and, you know, standards, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Stuff. That was a great discussion. I really enjoyed that. Great. Perfect. Perfect. Let's... Um... I think that's good. Let's go to the next one. Um, Michael, do, do, do you want to go, Michael or Aaron? Whoever, it doesn't matter. You wanna I want to go last because I got I got like eight charts to show. Oh, okay, okay, let's go, yeah. Michael. <laughs> Michael. Michael, 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 right. have it here yeah. right now. Michael, let's see what you got. Let's see his screen sharing should be. If anybody that's watching, you know, um, next me, week no, this or Halloween. Up. Oh wow. Ooh. Okay. All right. So All right. We, we were talking about maps. You know, uh, my first thought, you know, goes to Johnny Walker. He's a mm -hmm. you know, former Tableau guy and just everything he does with maps, uh, you know, beautiful. Um, now, the story behind this, uh, you know, this is talking about the uh, migratory journey of a uh, uh, bar headed uh, goose. Mm -hmm. And if you look at kind of his work across the board, you need uh, kind of this ultra wide or ultra tall high definition, uh, more likely TVs to really, you know, uh, appreciate kind of level of detail and artistic uh, work that goes into this. Wow. 
Um, but I, I did post the link into the, the chat, so email or Aaron, if you want to maybe share that out. People can Already did, Michael. Pull it up. Great, thanks. So what I like about this is he kind of tells the story of, you know, what we're, we're looking at to discussing the kind of, again, the migratory paths of uh, these birds or, or mm -hmm. geese, you know, how they travel. But more so what's interesting is in the way that they do it. You know, there's these sightings that, you know, where they should or shouldn't be, you know, they're at these elevations that, you know, are not necessarily believable due to the fact that they're so high and how can, how can they even sustained flight, um, let alone even breathe up there. Um, and kind of what you see is you see this path. Um, and we'll talk about maybe some of the issues that I have with these in, a, in just a moment. But what I do like at the bottom here is there's more charts that actually show you where these kind of elevation points are, um, you know, within the Gobi Desert, uh, to the Indian Plateau, and so forth. And then where you see most things like where um, passenger jets, airplanes, where they're flying and where these uh, uh, geese are also flying, you know, at that level. Wow. It's high. Um, wow. So we, we can kind of see that that transition, you know, on their path. Not necessarily, this isn't necessarily interactive, but you can kind of get a sense of, okay, all these hills and valleys, how they're traveling, to what distance and so forth. Um, over on the far left, you have the scatter plot of the recorded altitude um, and sightings of these uh, birds. One so again, very it's very beautiful and so forth. But uh, real quick, the, the biggest problem that I have is direction. You mm -hmm. know, we're looking at this top and bottom, but I notice that on a lot of his work, you know, he does have kind of the north, you know, centralized at you know an angle or this. So for me, this really needs to kind of shift up and down. North has to be for me up at the top, south at the bottom, and so on and so forth. Yep, that, that was the same comment I had, Michael. I was looking at this and I see all the, the country names listed here. I see China, I see India, mm -hmm. I see Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. But then as I look at it, it, it didn't really make sense to me. Like I, I couldn't relate it to the world map that I know in my head. So mm -hmm. I found myself like tilting my head to the side going, oh, it's tilted sideways, like 90 degrees. So my only right. thought of the, the reason that he did that, at least for this case, is you can see that you can see it on a, this way on a widescreen as everyone usually has it. If you mm -hmm. do it the other way, then you go, then you have to scroll in order to see that, that flight mm -hmm. path. Okay. That makes it a mobile friendly viz, Aaron. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I, I don't think any of Johnny's work is mobile friendly. <laughs> but uh, no, that, that that does actually make sense. And I, I think, again, strategically, it was done in a way, if you look at the placement of mm -hmm. where the context goes to where some of these charts are, uh, where the landscape is and the coloring, for me, it, it all works. Granted, the other issue is, you know, font size. It is very, you mm -hmm. know, small and hard to read if you have you know, wall size TV, 80 inch or above, not a problem. Uh, for monitors, yeah. you know, I am squinting and, you know, trying to read these things. But the map itself is, the colors are great. It's all beautiful. Um, the migratory paths, you know, I can follow where the, some of these concentrations are. You can see things. Um, so can you hover and like, it does it, or can you interact with it? No? No, no, not, not if it's interactive. Okay. At least from what I can tell. Uh, can you, uh, Michael, maybe you can help me understand the, at the bottom, they've got the plateau there in white. Is this like the altitude that those birds were found was between the ground basically down there at the very bottom and then up to the top peak of those, of that white area? At least observed. Yeah. Okay. So then it says, to the upper left part of that, it says they can fly as high as a passenger jet. So there's a jet up there along with a bird. So is the is that bird, is that where it was observed or is that just a, a fun, let me put a bird on the page? Well, I, I think that that's, there is no necessarily 
factual evidence yet. Um, it does go into detail now that they do GPS track them and observe them. But there is, I guess, anecdotal, uh, you know, people indicating, hey, I saw this. You know, did you actually see it or did you see something else? Um, but at the altitude at which they were observed was near uh, the level of, you know, at some points, maybe a passenger jet. So again, yeah, is this, you know, in relation to data that was captured or more just, hey, it's possible? I think this is more of the possible than observations. This is the observations. Interesting. Yeah, from visually, this this um, this visualization is kind of a uh, two words in the same sentence. This visualization is visually stunning. It, it's very beautiful, and it's it's it reminds yeah. me of like that era of like the the explorers going traveling across the world and going into all these different countries and like when the when aviation was becoming more more globally uh, used um, and, and uh, yeah that's all I got to say it, it it looks like a book it really does it's like a um, book magazine something like that yeah you're right it is very hard to to try and figure out what the key messages are from this because I'm having to squint and like zoom in really closely to read all these descriptions. Uh, so I wish that was even more. Yeah, it is, it is very story based yeah. uh, rather than just looking at it and understanding what's happening. Uh, you do got to go through each of these uh, passages, interpret it, and then you have the data to kind of supplement it. But uh, yeah, it is like a story. It is kind of like a book where you just kind of read and agree with it, I guess. But I, I do think that the, the effectiveness of the map works. Um, you know, I kind of go back and forth saying, well, there's there's too much noise. There's, you know, all this other data that might be able to be whitewashed or um, put out. Because really, if we're just looking at the uh, migration path, mm -hmm. it, it's just really that centerpiece. But again, from a visual standpoint, you lose a lot of the effectiveness or the coloration in that. So twofold. I don't think it adds any value, but it, visually it, it, it all works. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I think it's good that it's not interactive because there's already a ton going on here. The, okay. only, the only thing I said I would get, I would want to know that would be interactive is uh, I got to go down to that very bottom bar there. You can see that there's a, a huge drop off there at that river and the passage through that valley. Looking at the map itself, I don't know where that is. I don't, don't know this area enough to know where that is. It would be nice if I could hover on the annotation or one of the dots and then do something would, would highlight on the map of where that is. Because I'm, I'm just curious, just again, just exploratory. Like, why does it, why does it just take a nosedive there and then it just, you know, flat the rest of the way. Yeah, that's a good point. I will I will do one minor adjustment just to make it easier to read. Uh, and you don't have to add new data. So in each one of this paragraph, right, I will just put a hover, a business tooltip hover just to, to make that large. So if you take the same information that is there and then you put it on a business tooltip and expand it, so when you hover, it will look like it's zoom, like you zoom in so that you can read it because right now I cannot read it. But if uh, mm -hmm. if you put it in there and then you can see it zooms out and then you can read it. I don't know, something like that just to read it easier, make yeah. it easier to read. But it's the same information. So you're not adding any new. So as we're, as we're talking about this, the, the image is very, very visually appealing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think someone mentioned that it'd be to be a good place for it in uh, like a magazine or a newspaper mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. it's not not in a business setting, you know, because if no. this were in a business meeting, you're trying to communicate critical data to drive some action. This is this one is not the right place for it. So where do you all think that this visualization would be most effective for the reader? National Geographic. In a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> National Geographic. National Geographic magazine. Really official, like yeah. a, or 
Yeah, I said it before. This is... Wall art. Nice. Yeah, bird, bird enthusiasts. Yeah. yeah. But it's still cool data, you know, it's still interesting. Like he was able to do this. Um, it's pretty Beautiful. impressive. Great colors. Thank you, Mike. Let's Great see. Job, Anybody have anything else? Well, let's go to, to, to Aaron. Aaron, you have plenty of time, I think, to get us crazy. I'm with your eight charts. Bill, Bill said that Alberto Cairo is in Miami. Alberto Cairo, uh, uh, Think Pool. What is the name of that book? I forgot. Um, I, I know the book. I don't remember right now, but I have the book around. Um, is this your chart, Aaron? Yeah. Um, I've got lots of tabs at the top, but I'll start here. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so uh, there's there's lots lots of ways we can map things, and not necessarily you don't need, really need to to put it on a map of the United States or another country. You can do other other mapping uh, options, which I'm, I'm going to kind of just walk through a little bit of these. Uh, this one's storm tracking. Uh, I'm actually working on a hurricane one like this for the, for the East Coast because uh, because I like I like this this look, and uh, uh, you know down here they've got you know the wind speeds. For each of these storms, uh, but uh, you know this is this is a, a map in a way where it's it's tracking those storms based on its its geolocation. Uh, Alain, you were talking about ones like this when you're at the airport. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. This is this is our hub, and here's all the places that we go to. Mm -hmm. All right, so yep. this is I, I like this this uh, you know source country. Let's see. Let's I didn't see this before. Let's go to the U.S. Let's see what that does. Didn't do a thing. One more try. Let's see. Wow. Okay. Too much. Woof. That's too, too much going on there. Anyway, so like you know, this is kind of a, a neat map. I don't know how they do that, but like that's a that's a, a visually appealing thing if, if people are looking for something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, here's one where this talks about the the distribution of um, Domino's pizzas from your home. Uh, now this isn't interactive or it's not um, dynamic where I can select, uh, you know, my city, but mm -hmm. I just like that. It's, it's like, you know, down here, you've got this radius of 500 to 750 miles, zero to 250. And you can see where each of those uh, Domino's pizzas are. So you can, you can map just about anything. Uh, this one is uh, showing the, the top 15 fast food chains and where they're located at. So like this is this is Subway and, you know, the density, it's like a density map where like where, where all those are. So as you scroll through here, you can see where, where each of them are located and how how heavy they are. Dunkin' Donuts, really, really a northeastern thing. Wow. Uh, so I think I saw another one we, that was. We had that uh, same kind of map, what was it, last week? Uh, where we had the fast food, the, the Taco Bell. Yeah, so this yeah, would have been a, a really good map to kind of identify those concentrations. I like this. Yeah, Sonic, big in big in Texas down here. Huh. You know, oh, RV is like really out here, yeah. like not, not hardly any out here. Wow. I would love I would love to see this, um, um, Aaron, all together like this, like little, like maybe yeah. small multiples, like little small yeah. multiples. Would Each nice. brand would be a different color. Yeah, that would be good. Would that be too much? Here's here's another heat one by um, county. So mm. they're looking at, at data from 1985 to 2019. A lot of data here. Um, you know, they've got the top five counties um, with the largest increase. So you can see how each of those counties are doing. Uh, some of them are down here in Florida. But I know just a just a different way to look at a map. It's not just uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a really gradient uh, color map, uh, okay. and it's also animated, which is kind of neat. Here's a, an office social distancing map. <laughs> uh, so uh, so so Ken Ken here is is great at this stuff, and it's like you know, is your office set up for proper social distancing? Uh, and yeah, he talks about, you know, mm -hmm. it, it depends on traffic flow and, and whatnot, but again, mm -hmm. he's not, this isn't the, the map of the United States or some geographic, whatever, but he's, he's used a mapping function in order to map the office 
and then you can see based on your, your the mapped office of you know where what what's a good spot what's not a good spot but does it does it meet requirements okay yeah you're, you're good wow. there you're gonna have to worry about these two like this is all gotta go away and you know it just just a different way to kind of map things uh here's here's a real neat one and i'm not gonna pretend like i understand what's going on here, but, uh, uber worked with mapbox to 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 add this functionality it's a, like a mobility trends mm -hmm. so they oh. talked about the, the layering this on this and that and and then they had this hashtag um uh, I don't remember what it is, but I brought it up. Deck GL. So, th so with that technology, th they're able to do like the most granular things you can imagine. Uh, and and if again, think of Uber. Uber would have a a, a need to know, you know, who's taking what routes. Uh, what's the most efficient wow. route? Uh, what's what? Where are the most people at that we can we can leverage um, our fares? Here, here. It's like you know, you want to track your 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 shipping containers. You can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just a lot of like, you can do nearly anything you want with maps if you have the right technology to do it. Wow. Uh, here's here's a here's a neat one. So this it shows the U.S. migration patterns between cities. Uh, red mm -hmm. means says uh, um, blue lines uh, net migration, while red is net migration out. Now I, I so when you move the map around, your your mouse around, it shows you where people go. Now I mm -hmm. clicked on this to try this demo. And mm -hmm. it, it just looks like this. So I, I, as as far as I could get it, but I just wanted to show you like what it looks like when you when you hover. Wow. You know, so you can see where people are going and where people are coming into. Uh, it's just where are the really ones cool. going outside of the U.S.? I see some like might be going to Hawaii or. Right. And I don't, and I, yeah, and I don't even know what like I, I don't know what how far this is like the middle of the ocean unless this is like Puerto Rico maybe no poor, poor, it's like well, over Puerto here. Rico's more yeah. inward yeah it's closer, Florida, right it's more north so so but I mean it makes sense you know I don't know I I don't really know what this is but I just I just thought this was an awesome map like you, you see this one goes all the way out to Alaska up there in the upper left hand corner and down yeah. to Hawaii there in the far left uh just a just a just a neat map neat neat thing that you can do that if you had the data the data is everywhere you can do lots of things with data that you can never imagine uh so my my uh, this i wanted to talk about go through is here from sean he works at comcast uh he's also does he does these uh music ones uh if you remember a couple weeks ago we did the, the music ones he's got um uh he's got that one he's got the dark side of the moon and a beetlejuice uh so just a lot, just a lot of really, really neat things out here. And and so the one we're going to go over is this Starbucks first Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, so, right. so, so we know how popular food was for that episode. So I wanted to do a, another a map that had to do with food. So, okay, great. so we're look, what we're looking at here is um, when the, I understand this is that top bar is a, a hundred percent stacked bar. It shows you the percentage of Dunkin' Donuts versus Starbucks, 67% mm -hmm. to 32%. Wow. You got the footprint of, of how many are in each county would be my guess. Uh, looks like there's not a, a visit tool tip to really know what that is. This next one is stores per 1,000. Hmm. Look at how divided it is. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. So, you you know, here's kind of the legend of how it works. It, it's a pretty detailed legend, and, you know, these uh, middle colors may not have all – you know, you probably don't need that, but you know, that's, it's pretty thorough of how his color range is going. And I've also mm -hmm. never seen a legend done like this. It's usually, you know, this way or this way, but I've never seen a square legend. Yeah. A matrix. And then down here yeah. is the part that I like. So you can select your state. It tells you what kind of state you are. It's got a donut chart for Duncan, which you have uh, to do. That's super cool. <laughs> You have to do that. That's the one, only one time that I, I'd be okay with the donut chart is if it's for a company that sells donuts. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for each county, it tells you how many, you, how many um, Dunkin' Donuts you have versus how many Starbucks you have. Gotcha. So you can see, like, if if the if the green if the green green one Starbucks, if it's on the right hand side, that means that that county has more Starbucks than Dunkin' Donuts. Than Dunkin' Donuts. And vice and vice versa. I really like this. So I'm in I'm in Orange County, so it's pretty close. It's pretty neck and neck. I, I'm a I'm a Duncan fan myself, uh, but this it's pretty close. That's really neat. 
I really like it because, you know, this, uh, the, the, if we talk about this a little bit, you know, uh, this, it, it actually introduced your users or like the individual that is looking at this visualization into the visualization because you can find your state, your county. And I mm -hmm. think that will help you, I mean, someone, someone to, to, to use this and make it useful. And, you know, the beginning, it gets, tells you the story and it took you here at the end and then you yeah, can exactly. interact. We, we talked about that before of, of personalizing the dashboard so mm -hmm. that people are invested in it. Uh, we uh, The first one we looked at was uh, Ohio. Well, that for, mm -hmm. for an Ohioan, that, that was, uh, they were invested in that because it's like, hey, my state's on there. What, what are they showing here? So this kind of does the same thing of like, what, oh, like, I can, like, this is all neat and whatnot. And like, oh, like, you know, I, I'm from, originally from Illinois. I'm like, well, that's kind of neat. But like, I, I don't really see my county's not here in the middle of nowhere. Oh, I can I can select, I can actually come in here. So now I'm interested. I, I whether it's gonna give me uh, insights or not. It's like I'm gonna dive into it because I want to see specific to what it, what is personal to myself. Mm -hmm. I really it's really like cool. It. I'm going into the viz here. I have it on my uh, web browser, and I'm also looking at Orange County because that's where most of us are. And I, I just found it crazy that there are 67 Dunkin' Donuts and 52 Starbucks within just Orange County. And I'm thinking to myself, like in, in my normal like um, commute or like my weekly routine, at most I see, I know of maybe one or two, maybe three Starbucks in my nearby area that I might visit often or like a couple of Dunkin' Donuts. But then reading here that combined, there are like 119 of these locations within my county, that's, that's mind-boggling. Yeah, this is really cool. I like the coloring, you know, like the theme, making it perfect with the theme. Um, I mean, I, I know Sean, I uh, met Sean before. I mean, he's great data visualization uh, expert. And, yeah, I, I love some of his business, especially the one for Prince, uh, the music ones. And this is yeah. really good. This is excellent. Yeah, what do you, what do you, what do you think, Michael? Oh, this is, this is uh, very effective. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think you did a good job. I'm just going through playing uh, playing around with my state, Arizona. Everything yeah. pretty much on this. Oh, yeah, go go, go select Arizona. Select Arizona. I want to see what Arizona's like. Yeah, yeah, we've got Duncan, uh, you know, here and there, but you know, you got a Starbucks Whoa. on wow. you know, 50 corners. Yeah. You know, in a store, um, standalone. Great. There's like so. So this so this map makes this map makes sense to you, Michael. Like, there's hardly any Duncan in the, in your state, or at least in your area. Wow, a few. Um, you got to go looking for them. Okay, I noticed some things. Thank you, Michael, for saying that. <laughs> this is so effective that it actually tells you this is Arizona. It's a Starbucks state. Mm -hmm. It actually tells you if it like it probably have a range. Yes, yeah, so if it's if it's fifty percent one way or the other, uh -huh. then, then show me that that company. Yes, but if it's like very high, it will tell you, oh, you're a Dunkin' Donuts state, or you're a Starbucks state, and that's impressive. So did Dunkin' Donuts start out on the East Coast? Because there's a big, like, there's a huge divide. Starbucks started in Seattle, so I'm imagining that. Dunkin' started somewhere on the East Coast which is why the, that they've marked their territory, so to say. It's amazing. This is amazing. Now, this one in New York, it tells you this is a Dunkin' Donuts state. That's so freaking good. It's a really good visualization. I mean, I don't know. I really like it. And the use of the, of the I mean, on this chart on the right, where it says county, that that's something that not a lot, a lot of us use a lot, but we should. I mean, it's, it's very effective, right? um and makes makes it easy to understand i, I actually i really like it yeah we just yeah you know, Mia, we've talked about doing this you know internally with like you know just just measuring one thing against another yeah, right. um and this is a this is an effective way to do that mm -hmm. because you can see the size is the probably well, it, the size from the one dot to the other is the variance right between mm, yeah like, and this one is hard to see because it's california but in other ones, you, you, it can tell you. Oh, cool. I, I think there might see. be one lone Dunkin' Donuts in the whole yeah. state of California. 
It's probably, I, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, it's yeah. a good, good question. I, I didn't see any, but it's got to be it's got to be here for a reason because there are some here that don't have any. Anything that's this gray. Hmm. Does it have to yeah, do with Washington and it's just all green? I mean, does it have to do with income? I mean, uh, you know, most of the what it's green on the on the previous slides and the previous one, previous uh, charts on top. You can see probably those states have more income than all the other states. I don't know, like right here. Because you, sort of you, you know, the well, New, yeah. New England states. No? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. So what happened? What happened in the middle? They don't. They don't drink uh, coffees, more yeah. beer. Or... Probably distribution costs must be all <laughs> or logistics more expensive to ship from like where they first headquartered. So they slowly expand from where the first location was and they just go down the coast. This is really good. <laughs> Sydney's at this graph just made me want to grab some coffee. Duncan or yeah. Starbucks? Agreed. <laughs> uh, Sydney, uh, is it um, a Starbucks or, or Duncan? Let us know. Any, anybody from the chat uh, wants to let us know? Well, let us know where where you at, uh, what state, and we can uh, find your state. Uh, have we shared the link in the chat? Yep. Yes, we did. Yes, yes. Anyone? Um, let's see. Um, so, what so, so here, so here's okay. a, here's a good here's a good example. Hawaii. Uh, so I'm, I was thinking like, okay, this they must be like one or, or something here. It's yeah. not. It, it's that's the zero line, which maybe it'd be zero. helpful if there was some kind of like way to know that, because uh, it says here that it's a hundred percent Starbucks. Oh wow! Not one. Sydney said Starbucks. Huh. Sydney's a Starbucks fan. Complete monopoly on the state. Yeah, same for uh, Alaska. I was going to ask you about Alaska. I was going to ask you. Okay. Nice. What about when uh, you check on the capital, U.S. capital? What do they drink oh, over there? The. I want to see what the opposite is. The I'm, going to, huh? I'm going to go up in Maine and see what's going on up there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. That's it's weird that the cool. map the map kind of is like distorted. Some, some of them are. It's like flattened that's really cool it says here duncan donuts is headquarters is based in canton massachusetts okay okay well we got we got to check out massachusetts <laughs> if there's one starbucks in there they're in for trouble <laughs> that is funny that's a couple Oh yeah, that's correct. When I went to, I, I just went to Boston like years ago, and I noticed there was no Starbucks. Well, you get a, it's, it's a monopoly then. If no one's around, then then that's good for the, the owner. Yeah. Students, too many students. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so I thought this was a good good uh, visual nice. of, of using a map and and uh, being personalized to a specific state and, and letting people choose that. So. I, I I think it's also easy to understand because you're not putting out there a lot of things. Um, so Ooh. see, Joe said Dalton Ruer had a post on bivariate mapping, it's very powerful. And he posted the link in the chat. Healthcare That's awesome. We'll check it out. Thank you, thanks, Joe. Thank you. Um, well, almost we, we're pretty much we in, we, in, we in another show today. Mapping, really cool topic, very interesting. Uh, we're definitely gonna have to do something with coffee just coffee in the future a lot of people wanted more related with food definitely going to do something about coffee but you i can't just use you can't use that biz though no 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 that one we have to tell everyone no 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 not that one uh but coffee is definitely something that we want to do so just want to let everyone know you know next week we're going to start part first part of halloween database uh we are going to have cody Everybody, I mean, I'm gonna be dressed up. Uh, and I know that Joe is there. Joe, Joe, some people from your company are gonna be here in the show. Just let them know already. I already showed this guy some of my, um, I don't know, like very scary thing that I'm gonna wear. But anyway, yeah, some Max and thing. But um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And we're gonna start advertising tomorrow. Uh, Halloween data, lots of great data visualizations out there. 
a lot of fun. Um, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, so that's what we're gonna have two weeks uh, of data visualization related to Halloween. So hope that everybody can you know share. Uh, let us know. Share uh, our LinkedIn page. Share the data meaning and let us know uh, what else. What other topics we have? A sign up sheet for every week. So if you're interested with that, uh, let us know too. And hope to see you next week. Thank you so much for Aaron. Michael, Elaine, you did great. Elaine, that was a great visualization. Thank you so much. Yeah, first time on the show. More to and, come. <laughs> oh, yeah. And thank you so much to everyone. And see you next week, Halloween. This is going to be amazing. Thank you. Yes. See you next week. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.